Good evening and welcome to the November 9th, 2020 uh, session of the Yukon Planning Commission. We will begin with invocation and flag salute. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance tonight as we try to do the best for the citizens of Yukon. We ask that you look after our first responders and that those who are always on the scene first and also those that have been without power and have damage to their yards, it's a stressful time. We ask for your healing hand upon them. In your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Chairman Baker. Here. Commissioner Enmark. Here. Commissioner Gerba. Here. Commissioner Geis. Here. Commissioner Wright. Here. Uh, hopefully you've all had uh, time to read the minutes of the October 12th meeting, if there are any corrections. Hearing none, uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion. Second. Roll call. Chairman Baker. Yes. Commissioner Enmark. Yes. Commissioner Gerba. Yes. Commissioner Geis. Yes. Commissioner Ray. Yes. Uh, are there any visitors online tonight? No visitors online. Uh, if we do lose uh, uh, connectivity tonight, we will wait for 30 minutes to try to correct the situation and reschedule if necessary. Uh, item three is uh, the election of the Vice Chairman for the Planning Commission. Do I have any nominations from the floor? I'd like to make a motion to uh, nominate uh, Jared Wright as Vice Chairman. I second that. I have a nomination and a second for Jared Wright as Vice Chair. Any other nominations? Roll call. Chairman Baker. Yes. Commissioner Enmark. Yes. Commissioner Gerbeck? Yes. Commissioner Geis? Yes. Commissioner Ray? I'm going to vote for myself. I guess yes. <laughs> <laughs> Conflict of interest. <laughs> I guess he'll do. Congratulations. <laughs> and of Thank course, we, we always double your salary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, item four is a request for approval by Baker First Commercial Real Estate for a final plat of Yukon Angle, located at 1010 Garth Brooks Boulevard. The applicant is requesting approval of a commercial final plat in preparation for the development of a 12 fueling station, fueling position service station with a convenience market. Is there someone here to speak? Can you please, uh, your name and address, please. Hmm. Uh, Rod Baker, 2800 Northwest 36th Street in Oklahoma City. And just tell us about your project. Well, we're, we're excited. Uh, we've uh, dealt with a lot of prospects, and we've come up with a couple of real quality buyers for these out parcels. Uh, so we waited, uh, after filing the preliminary plat a few, a few years ago, we waited to be sure what we were dealing with in terms of <clears throat> what the needs what would be for anybody going in. And so we made uh, a couple of adjustments on the plat, uh, including uh, pushing the setback, the building setback on Garth Brooks back 25 more feet than what it showed on the preliminary plat. And uh, we expanded uh, the lot uh, on the north end a little bit to accommodate the contract for that particular prospect. Uh, we, we, we had a contract with them that was, uh, for 35,000 feet, and it was about 30,500 feet, so we <clears throat> pushed that lot line back a little bit. And um, so we have uh, one buyer that's uh, contracted by the entire frontage along Vandement, and then uh, another buyer for the lot at the north end. So that's lot one and lot three? Uh, lot four would be at the north end. Isn't that called a lot four on there? The origi originally we had um, lot one and two were at Van along Vandement, 
and lot three was the where the <coughs> the improvements are there where we have all the retail and office mm -hmm. and then this shows lot three on the Excuse northeast me. corner is it yeah. did they change it yeah, they changed okay all right lot three okay well anyway that originally it was lot four under the new but they uh they wanted uh, the lot along vandam it to be one lot rather than two lots so because it it's one contract for the whole thing so i guess the the numbers changed in the middle of that so we're so we're retaining that whole center section and then the northwest corner and just selling off these lots right now We've done a, a traffic study for the uh, proposed driveway on Vandemit. Um, you've, you've all read all of the information on that. We request approval on that as well. <coughs> and that is essential. <laughs> so we have this, uh, we have this snappy picture with red dots. Could you tell us what the uh, significance of the red dots are, Mitch? Red dots is what the uh, traffic uh, engineer, when he was doing his analysis, he used those as his pivot points, uh, looking at the intersection as well as looking back to uh, the west on Bannament. If you look at your counts, that's usually where the red dots at. So along that uh, where it says project location and that big and the uh, box, it's just, uh, I think I would, I just, to, just just as a starting point, where is the additional driveway? It basically lines up across from this red dot here in the middle, right here. Okay. Right now they're looking at their movements between these two driveways here. Uh-huh. So, uh, the recommendation is to make sure that this driveway, if it's allowed to line up with the one that serves to the south to Walmart, not the one that serves the bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they looked at their turning movements. There's another page that has a right angle and a left angle. It's talking about the turning movements at each spot that would be an intersection that would have traffic. So other than other than fuel deliveries uh, and the Budweiser truck, not expecting any increase in semis turning into the project? No, it would be my understanding for this type of use, it would more like be vehicles, vehicular type stuff. If it was to be served by trucks and stuff, they are leaving these current driveway access points and they'll be shared, that's okay. currently there. So the truck will be able to make its turn around the building as well as he's talking about they moved the canopy and the gas pumps farther to the west about right. 25 feet also given a site clearance in front of the existing building so it does not take away from that okay yeah, this questions from the commissioners yeah, I've got one for you, Mitchell. But uh, roughly, how, do we do we know how far that um, that proposed uh, drive number two is from the um, intersection of Garth Brooks and um, Vandement? I thought it was in this traffic report. Um, See, I looked over the drawing, but I, I got 120 feet. But I think that was that was the en entire frontage of the lot. Yeah. Their main concern for distance was actually lining up with that, like I said, that access to Walmart. Uh, if you'll see in the, the motion that she's recommending. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, the engineer company that did STEC, they actually are the one that does all the engineering for the city of Yukon looking at uh, traffic single control devices. Uh, they're currently working on a project for us on Garth Brooks. They took this in consideration with the Garth Brooks uh, traffic coordination project, and they looked at that traffic and the impacts of it on Garth Brooks as well as vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, with Garth Brooks, we're looking for a progression type system. We're replacing the cabinets pretty well from Bandiment all the way to Northwest 10th, so we get progression through all the lights. That's a council request, which it need to be done with the amount of traffic we have. So. Well, and one thing that kind of caught my eye was that uh, they're on table three, they're looking at intersection capacity. Mm -hmm. And my probably my main concern is dueling left hand turns between Walmart and then the entrance to this facility. You're going to have people making left hand turns out of either side, and that, I'm, that's going to cause an issue. And, and in this table three, they're looking at the uh, your critical approaches. You know, when they rate that, essentially that's it's in an E category or a D category, which is unstable flow, uh, having to wait through at least one light is probably E category, and then D is uh, tolerable delay, waiting through more than one signal light. So mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted to make my concerns known on that. That's probably going to cause some issues in that area. Yeah, if you read his final determination, he, uh, let me see. Yeah, maybe below table two. Yeah, he was, I was trying to remember what it says here. Let me see. Level of service E or better is considered an acceptable level yes. of service. Yes. What was interesting too that I read is that sixty percent of the traffic is ex is expected to come from existing traffic. Yeah, the bypass that, portion. Right, that right. It's supposed to add position. maybe twenty five cars a day. But does it redirect them? That's that's curious what you brought up. And at the present time, there's no traffic improvements slated for that area. Yes, from north uh, from Bandiment to Northwest Tenth, we're actually doing progression from the light all the way south or north. Okay, yeah, okay, but nothing along other than relocating the driveway for this this uh, this. Uh, part. He's proposing to relocate to put a driveway that lines up with the Walmart mm -hmm. one that services the Walmart and that shopping center behind. Okay, is yeah. what the recommendation is, but we're actually doing traffic control from the Vandermont light on Garth Brooks all the way to Northwest 10th. So we're going to be getting those vehicles out a lot faster than they currently mm -hmm. now do instead of the stacking. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get progression both north and southbound. Okay. They'll actually be interconnected all the way to 10th Street and then there's a uh, program with the engineer that he will watch the lights and at certain times of the day if it needs to adjust they can automatically adjust it. The software does it but also he can watch it and we're going to see how that does for traffic because we know it becomes a problem stacking from the school and just normal use sure, every day sure. mm -hmm. uh, we feel like that's best you know to get that traffic moving uh, it's been too long we're kind of like a rolling parking lot so we're going to try to take care of that uh, well, that, that you is got your work that out that's a tough section of, of, of traffic so. yes uh, like I said this engineer group has looked at it they've looked at it several times for us and they think this is the first piece of several things that we'll do farther to the south but mostly everything else has happened south of this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but again all of these changes and all this planning for the future if we vote this in today it'll still be accommodated for with all the changes moving south Yes, that, that's the one good thing about it. They used the same engineer that we did, and he took that in consideration in his calcs because he already had done everything on Garth Brooks. So it's been taken in consideration. If it was a different engineer, then he wouldn't know about that. And so. Okay, good timing. Yeah. Other questions? Let's talk about lighting. Um, Are there going to be uh, hats for a better, uh, is this going to be a 24 hour a day operation? Yeah, I would assume it probably will be a 24 hour a day s situation. Uh, they are required to have shields on their light that does not affect any residential area. Uh, so if there's a cast of light that's affecting the residents, say to the north and west, they will have to take that in consideration in their design. 
Uh, most of these companies of this type caliber already do a light study to make sure that it falls on the lot and doesn't wash out because they don't want to light the whole neighborhood up anyway. They want to make sure that their area is lit. But uh, Mr. Baker may be able to explain a little bit more, but that's typically what happens in these situations. No, it would be a different LED light. That should be better. It's the theory, right? <coughs> huh? The theory is that if you come in with something new with the LEDs and new technology, it outdates those ancient boxes that are there yeah. currently. They wouldn't use those anyway. It's the wrong type of lighting for this type of use. Yeah. That's more for car dealership. Yeah. Lighting's different. The requirements are different. And the same would be true if it cast onto the street and caused, uh, you know, a hazard for people to be able to see or something like that. That's also something we take into consideration. That washout along Garth Brooks and Vandermet, we'd take it in consideration. Well, a lot of the questions that come to mind are brought forward by the magnificent job that Oklahoma City did with the on queue on 10th and Cornwell. <laughs> and so uh, I'm afraid you're you're suffering from their. <laughs> Uh, great planning of that project. Yeah, Oklahoma City has different requirements for cast of lights than we do. I think it's cast as much light as possible. <laughs> yeah, they want to be seen off. So. Well, they're seen all right. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Would someone uh, read the motion? Uh, you know, we. Uh, you may remember we voluntarily spent the money to move the driveways on Garth Brooks when we first did this project. We, uh, the, the driveway <coughs> that's closest to Vandemont, uh, was we tore it out and we lined it up with uh -huh. uh, Walgreens the way it should be. And then the other one we moved that on down too. We knew it was, we knew it would be a better traffic flow to, to do those. So we voluntarily did that even though it wasn't required at the time. In the case of the application for a final plat of Yukon Angle as submitted by Baker First Commercial Real Estate, we have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all plans and attachments cited in the staff report. I move that a variance for the distance of a driveway from an intersection be approved. I also move that this item be recommended for approval to the City Council with revisions as noted in the staff report and with the following conditions. Number one, Execute the plat notations as noted in items four through six of the staff report. And number two, modify the driveway location along Vandeman Avenue, drive number two, as noted in the TEC traffic impact analysis dated 10-13-20. Uh, uh, are you okay with the uh, staff recommendations? Uh, we're, we're, we're in agreement. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Chairman Baker. Yes. Vice Chair Rate. Yes. Commissioner Enmark. Yes. Commissioner Gerba. Yes. Commissioner Geis. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, any new business? No business tonight, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any uh, study sessions for the rest of the calendar year? Uh, the one that we may have coming up, that we haven't determined yet, we will have a presentation for the City Council. Uh, we will be looking at possible future study sessions that we will look at going forward because of the comp plan has been adopted by the Council. So we will look at that and we'll be coming up some recommendations as we move forward. Probably after the first of the year? After the first of the year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything for open discussion? Oh, yeah, one thing. Hey, I'd just like to thank all the uh, utility workers mm -hmm. and uh, all the folks working for uh, CE and, and working for the uh, the city here that got everything. Uh, well, not, not everybody, but some people are still out of power. But it was a massive, massive uh, impact. And uh, these people worked their butts off to get it back online. So I appreciate the effort. We 
we should have enough wood chips for the foreseeable future. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If uh, no other business, uh, adjourn this meeting. Our next meeting is December 14th, 2020.